Hello everyone, uh, welcome to UPSU OK Week. Um, my name's Hayley, I'm the Welfare Officer at the Students' Union um, and I'll be hosting our live talk today with two of our staff from the Student Wellbeing Service at the University of Portsmouth. But before I start, I'll talk a little bit about what UPSU OK is and why we're here today. So UPSU OK is a campaign that we do as a Students' Union every year and not just to raise awareness about mental health, but have conversations around mental health and how we can support each other as student community and the services to access as well. Um, and obviously mental health is such a very broad topic. Um, so we're only going to be speaking about a few things today, such as the services available, but also how COVID has affected um, student mental health and student wellbeing. Um, I think it would be quite silly to ignore the impact of COVID this year um, on student mental health. Um, so we'll be talking about that today. Um, so I'm going to introduce to you um, our two guests, um, Michelle and Sophie, if you come on the screen, please. Hiya. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, how are you both today? I'm well, thank you. <laughs> I'm really good. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. How are you, Emily? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Good yes. to be here. Um, so, Michelle, if if it's okay, I can ask you to introduce yourself first and talk about what you do and the service as well. Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. I am Michelle Dadachanji, and I'm one of the counsellors at the Student Wellbeing Service. Um, hopefully, you guys have heard of the Student Wellbeing Service. We have lots of stuff to offer students in terms of mental health and wellbeing support. We've got mental health practitioners, wellbeing advisors, counsellors. Um, we've got courses and workshops that we run all throughout the year um, during the term time. Obviously, it's been online this year because of COVID, which is kind of fortunate, but also unfortunate because we lose that kind of in-person connection, but fortunate because you can access our courses and workshops from pretty much anywhere in the country or around the world. Um, we also run a student wellbeing service. Uh, so we also run our wellbeing cafe every Wednesday online, which we'll be talking a little bit more about later. Um, apart from that, we've got a WhatsApp app that we run through our service, and we've just got lots of um, information and advice that we can give you about anything that's going on for you. Really, nothing is ever too big or too small to come and get support with. Lovely, thank you, Michelle. No problem, Sophie. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, so my name is Sophie Till and I'm the wellbeing placement officer in the wellbeing team. Um, I basically spend one afternoon a week with the wellbeing team and it's fantastic. And uh, what I've been doing so far is attending the wellbeing cafe every Wednesday afternoon for an hour and a half. Um, and again, we'll be talking about it later on. Um, but yeah, it's been fantastic. So I'm really enjoying my placement with the team. Oh, cool. thank you, Sophie. Um, so we'll just get started with the conversation then. Um, so what I'll do, I'll, I'll just start off with a question um, and then we can just sort of, you know, one at a time talk about um, what we think. So as I mentioned at the beginning, COVID's obviously had a really big impact. And obviously I know a lot of people are probably fed up of <laughs> talking about it now as we're easing out of lockdown and all the restrictions going on. Um, but I suppose a uh, main question from Michelle, um, how do you see... How do you see this year um, being different for students compared to previous previous years in terms of what they've come to talk to you about in the wellbeing service? Yeah, it's been massively different, to be honest, as expected, probably. Um, I think so many students are even more isolated and disconnected than they've ever been before. And I think that's one of the biggest problems. And I feel like COVID is kind of you know, in my opinion, COVID has been like one big worldwide trauma for all of us. And it's obviously affected us very differently depending on where we are in the world and, you know, the different kinds of privileges we have. But I think the student population at UOP, what they've been coming with generally is isolation, disconnection, demotivation, you know, no, um, no routine, not being able to go to lectures, not being able to see their friends, not being able to go to, you know, bars and clubs and, and just, restaurants and stuff so yeah. i think it's been a huge challenge and it's been a very different challenge this year yeah i think it's very easy to sort of overlook the importance of the sort of student experience and how important those like small things are like going to the pub or seeing your friends and stuff and not being able to do that from just suddenly um because i remember last year when we all had to go online and work from home and it was just such a massive change so yeah, it must be really hard, but I think it's good that, you know, 
that students are able to start socialising a bit more again. Yes. I suppose as well that must be quite nerve wracking. You know, like, oh, all this time we want to go out and do that, but now it can seem a bit overwhelming, can't it? Everything going back to normal suddenly and going in big crowds and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like to get used to that. And when you haven't done that for quite a few months and actually over a year now, it's it's a bit scary just to go out and see friends again and go to a pub. That itself, when you haven't done that for a long time, you haven't seen anyone for a long time, it's it's scary for me as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no. Sophie, could you talk about the wellbeing cafe a bit more? Because obviously that's not a way that students can sort of try and meet other people, but I'll let you talk about that. Yeah, sure, the wellbeing cafe. Um, it's an informal supported social space, so it's currently online, uh, obviously, for um, so it's on Zoom. All students are welcome to attend. It's really relaxed. There's no pressure to join um, with a video, even audio. So if you don't want to, you can just use the chat function to communicate, um, and you can communicate as much or as little as you want to. Um, the idea is you just come along, you listen to the chat, um, it's hosted by two well-being service practitioners who always welcome you. And we have um, different topics and activities so related to um, all aspects of the well-being. So, for example, it could be one session could be about self-esteem or nutrition. But importantly, it's a place where you, you go to and you want to connect with friends, others, and just have a bit of fun, really. Because um, like we said, some students wouldn't necessarily socialize much with one another so it's a great place for it's an hour and a half um and you don't even have to stay an hour and a half if you want to drop in session turn up have a chat with us and um it's a really lovely place a lovely place and then hopefully we're hoping that we'll be we'll have the cafe in person again and i think we open to have that open again um september time if we can Oh, thank you. I think um, the, the Wellbeing Cafe, even online, is a good way to sort of s slowly start easing into socialising again. Like, I know it's not face-to-face, -face, but then that sort of talking to people and making new friends, I think, and it's hour and a half a week, I think it's a really good um, way to get students who might be feeling isolated but also a bit nervous to reach out. Um, but do you have any tips for students who might be, you know, trying to gain confidence and trying to f sort of feel a bit less anxious about returning to I suppose normal life and what was normal for them then. Yeah, me, I think we can both share on that actually. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's, there's a few things around um, starting small and doing things that are kind of, yeah, small, small bites, I think, you know, baby steps, small bites and doing things that are sort of in your comfort zone still, but a tiny bit outside of it. So I know like a lot of students are really anxious about getting back to this new normal. What that, what's that going to look like? Hopefully with the roadmap um, unfolding, we are seeing the restrictions easing more and more. And hopefully by mid-June, we're not going to have any social restrictions. I think that's what the plan is. But that can be really anxiety provoking for a lot of people. Like, like you, Haley and Sophie have both said today, you know, people aren't used to that anymore. Um, and we, yeah, I think we, we are nervous. We are anxious about getting back out there. We're nervous about the, the vac, not the vaccine, the, um, but about COVID. Um, and yeah, just kind of feeling your way through. But I think definitely connecting with small groups of people or even one person at a time is quite a good tip to start with. Cause I know some students might feel the pressure to dive into big parties or, you know, big groups of people or, just because we can doesn't mean you have to do it. There's no, you know, there is that social pressure, but you don't have to buy into it. You know, maybe privately going off in a WhatsApp group and asking one or two people to go for a walk together. You know, still stay social distance if you feel that's most safe for you. You know, I assume mid-June, that if, if all the social distancing rules are, are gone, then people are gonna be hugging and, you know, doing whatever they want to, but you don't have to buy into that if you don't want to, because you're, space your personal space is your private space and you get to put a boundary in so definitely saying yes to the things that feel good saying no to the things that don't feel good not really feeling like you have to explain yourself even you know i'm not comfortable with that should be good enough especially if your mates are solid then they'll understand you know if you don't want to go out to a party in a big group um yeah 
yeah, so small doses, I think, is 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 a good idea really to begin with. And then you build your confidence back up that way. You know, maybe you can pop to the shops when it's a bit quieter, quieter as opposed to on like a Sunday afternoon when it's the busiest, if you want to start easing yourself back into doing things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Michelle. Um, have you got any tips, Sophie, as well to share? I would say as well, it's it's always scary doing something on your own. So uh, Michelle did touch on that. But I think if you have a friend who is quite willing to try something or go to a place with you, it's always good to see if maybe that friend can come along with you and just join that party or go even just going for a coffee together if that's something you haven't done for a long time. So having a friend to just to do that with you can can help. And it might help the friend as well, you know. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to try and choose something that you both would feel comfortable with. And then, you know, like you said, Michelle, having those boundaries and sort of saying to yourself what's comfortable and not comfortable. Because if you just if you're going to dive yourself into a situation, then you're just going to be back to, you know, feeling a bit isolated and a bit worried to get out. Um, but for the majority of students I've spoken to, I think they're quite excited for things to return back to normal. But there's also again the anxiety of like what's going to happen in the next academic year particularly first year students who haven't had that experience um you know and they probably haven't gone out before or gone to or joined like clubs and societies or really experienced with that much yeah. um so that will be a big thing as well but we have some student groups that are still running um digital digitally that's the word yeah and doing it online um some have already opened again because of sports um the outdoor activities but i probably recommend as well that you try and go with a friend and try and join a club and meet other people as well um because it's i suppose it's not all about partying and stuff like that mm -hmm. but it's, it's the fun side of it but and then there's so many different student groups and activities and interests um which i think I mean, if you already have that interest for it then it's going to be so much more easy and more comfortable to sort of ease into normal life so Definitely. Yeah. Even if it's making a plan with your housemates, you know, now that we can in a couple of weeks go to restaurants and things. And, you know, obviously now we can be outdoors together, just beginning to take those steps. Mm -hmm. um, and if you find yourself isolating yourself, then get some support, you know, really get some support before before you blink. And it's kind of August and you've isolated yourself all summer, you know, missed out on the good weather, missed out on kind of really meeting people. I would really encourage you to get some support to build up confidence if you feel like you can't take that first baby step then there's absolutely no harm in getting some support to yeah build your confidence back up build your resilience decrease that anxiety i feel like with anxiety it's you know we just overthink and we overanalyze and we catastrophize and it's so easy for us to be so stuck in our heads it's such a normal mm -hmm. human um, experience that most of us are having some of us just feel like we can push through that and take that baby step and some of us can't so we might need some additional support to get us there and get in touch with our service, you know, reach out to a friend or a family member, um, to the students union. Yeah, get definitely get some support if you are anxious and worried about transitioning to becoming social again. Yeah, absolutely, thank you. And you mentioned earlier that you offer workshops online. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any sort of ones that you would recommend for like students trying to ease in or trying to build up their confidence and resilience again? Yeah, well, um, good thing you mentioned that because although all our courses and workshops that we offer at the Student Wellbeing Service online have finished now for the academic year because we're only four weeks away from the end of term, really, awesome. um, we do have a Moodle module, um, a module on Moodle called Compassionate Mind Training. And that module, we use it a lot in our service, and that model really kind of simply and accessibly explains the role that anxiety and fear plays in our lives and how we are kind of driven by these factors to perform and people please and be perfect, you know, perfectionism, and then that leads to procrastination. And that feeds into kind of our threat system, which then makes us stay in bed and watch Netflix instead of doing any work or going to that party or going to meet my friends. And um, the third system is the soothing system, which is the one that kind of goes out the window most commonly. And that soothing system is where we are encouraging students to connect with others, to do things that are soothing for yourselves, that are grounding, that are nourishing, whether that's a hobby or a sport or, you know, joining a society. And it's about having all three of these systems in balance for yourself. 
So I haven't explained it very well today because it's just been off the top of my head, but we, we are that, that's still available online and live on Moodle all throughout the summer as well. So I'd really recommend if you are watching and you feel like you're struggling with anything from perfectionism, procrastination, motivation, anxiety, low mood, this compassionate mind training can really support you to get to know yourself a bit better, get more self-awareness and also help you to maybe put some things in place to take that first step. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's um, interesting when you mention about procrastination, because I think that's such a, a thing that every student goes through in a, a final year and you're just feeling a little bit there and you don't want to do anything. But then you have that excuse to try and you go out with mates, but then this year you might not have to. So it's, you know, it's so easy just to stay at home and, and do nothing, which is, which is fine for people to relax. So but then you get that stress build up when you get closer and closer to the deadline. Um, I suppose we could talk about how students manage the, the academic side of it. Obviously, we've spoken about the social, but a lot of students are also here just to solely focus on studies and can talk about how that's that's changed this year. Um, so, Sophia or Michelle, what's your been experience like chatting to students and how they've adapted to online? I think it's been a bit changed and they've had to adapt and I think they've adapted really well. But yes, it's been a really a really big change when we've had to change from being on campus seeing their tutors engaging them everything have to work out how to use Moodle how to get the information and just be on your own so that's that itself has been hard but I think um, in terms of procrastination it's also trying to do this um, making lists and trying to see like I've got all of this to do and it's so easy to think oh I can't do it because it's all scary and I, I don't know where to start and little things can be also to uh, just write what is it I've got to do I've got this and that and this and that and then slowly tackling one at a time you're talking about like one step at a time and all of this especially when everything's been new and transitioned to online and you get very overwhelmed um, so it's it's good to kind of take a step back and say right this is all new this is what I need to do right what do I start with and take one thing at a time take done and then move on to another thing and try not to be overwhelmed too much, which is easier said than done. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think there's a lot of pressure for, because you feel like you're at home, it's like, well, I've got nothing else to do, I should do this. And you know, it, do, it does get overwhelming trying to start a piece of work. Um, but I think that's had a big, like that combined with isolation, and everything else going on, it just sort of, you know, ex exemplifies like how, how difficult it can be. Um, yeah, I mean, it's good what we've been trying to do this year is even though we're promoting the services, we're trying to, you know, in Portsmouth and the student wellbeing service as well, also trying to engage in discussions with students about how we as a student union can actually support them rather than saying, oh, do this, go to the wellbeing service and that stuff, which is also good, but also how we can make life easier for students as well. Um, I think one thing we've done is talked about ECFs a lot. And I think there's still like a big sort of stigma around a student applying for an extension because they think, well, I've, I haven't been doing anything else. I don't, should I really be having an extension? And there's that feelings of like guilt and sort of a bit of pressure to try and complete something, even though you probably do need an extension. Um, so I know because of the IT issues that have been going on and stuff, they've had extensions. But I mean, throughout the year, I think we've had a lot of conversations with students, particularly in the union advice service as well, who are sort of struggling to understand ECFs. Um, so Michelle, maybe you could talk about how, you know, students sort of perceive ECFs and all that kind of stuff from, from your yeah. perspective. Yeah, I think that's a great point because, especially the point you made Haley, around, I'm just at home, I should be on top of it. You know, I, I, sh I haven't, haven't got anything else to do, I've got no choice, I should be studying. But I think that is, really dismissing a lot of student experience you know for for quite a few students being at home isn't isn't easy you know it's a it's a real challenge it depends who you're at home with it depends if you've got a workspace it depends on you know whether you're in halls and isolated or you know if all your housemates have gone home I think there's so many different factors to take into consideration it's not just I'm chilling at home doing nothing you know binging Netflix and that's all I'm doing and maybe that is all you're doing because that's all you can muster up the the strength to do from day to day but you know that means then that maybe getting some support would be appropriate i think so 
yeah, I think we need to be taking into consideration all the different factors and all the different experiences that people have been having. You know, we've seen clients who've lost family members to COVID. We've seen clients who who haven't been home or been able to see their family, you know, internationally for so for over a year now. Um, don't know when they're going to be able to go back home next. It's it's just been such a varied um, set of challenges for students. Um, what was your question? I went off track and got a bit passionate. <laughs> that's okay, that's really helpful. It's just about ECFs and how um, yes. you know students have been sort of talking about that with you and how, how you think it's helped them or maybe hindered them. Yeah, I, I think, to be honest, in my opinion, my personal opinion, I think ECFs have helped, you know, because for me, getting an ECF, if you need it, is is you equaling the playing field, you know? So if say student A can go home and they've got a lovely, wonderful, supportive family life and a wonderful workspace in their family home, um, you know, food being cooked for them, whatever, they're, they're safe and secure and, and relatively balanced at home and they can meet their deadline, great. But comparing it to another student who may not have those privileges or is disadvantaged, then we need to be leveling the playing field, right? It's It comes back to just being about equity. And if you need an ECF because you haven't been able to manage because of you know stress or anxiety or depression or past traumas or recent traumas or bereavements, then by all means, apply for an ECF, right? You, you deserve that extra, at least those extra two weeks, if not longer, you know, um, to, to submit your work so you can actually achieve your potential because student A hasn't had to go through these things potentially compared to student B. So I don't know if that ex example made sense, but yeah. I think like um, from my view and probably for the rest of my colleagues, when they see in the government guidance and it's all very sort of like a, a I suppose a one side, like umbrella approach and it really doesn't consider, you know, students who are wanting to go home, like over Christmas, for example, and those dates that students have had to go home and travel. It's like, but what about international students? What about students who are estranged? What about students who are struggling financially? Um, and those things weren't considered. And I imagine it's very frustrating for students trying to manage all of that. But because everyone's experiencing it, I think people have to accept that's how it is. And, you know, one just because you might feel bad because, oh, I'm sure someone else has got it worse than me because they've got this, they've got that. When I think students are they don't a lot of students don't sort of they're not very um passionate not passionate compassionate and they sort of underplay those experiences because you think of all these little things like um you're going online maybe your laptop's broke maybe you know you've experienced bereavement or you know all those things they do add up it doesn't have to be one one big event and i think i think that's easily ignored to how much like COVID has impacted everyone. You feel like, oh, nothing's really changed for me. Why am I feeling like this? But if you think about it, you've got so many different things, like you're saying, Michelle, we're talking about family life, friendships, um, your environment and other factors as well. I think it's really important to think about those things. And I suppose speak about ECFs, students can access support and applying for them through the advice service at the union. Um, I think a lot of students think like the advice service and the student wellbeing service are very similar. I mean, we all work together, don't we? So um which is really good, but advice will help with anything, you know, even if you've experienced kind of distress or trauma and you do need an extension and, you know, sort of working through the university policy to see what your rights are and how the uni can help you. Our advice service can help with that and they're available all year round as well, just like the student wellbeing service are. Um, yeah, I mean, we've got five minutes left. Um, don't know if there's anything else we want to talk about, about the services or any just sort of like final words or tips from any of you if we start with Sophie not to put you I, on the spot so just yeah no that's fine I think it, it'd be nice to talk about um safe care strategy for students and um what they can do you know if you're being a bit overwhelmed in a situation so they see so they're not magical solutions but there are things you can do to kind of help you um maybe relax a little bit and these things can be for example, um, connecting with nature, you know, going for a walk somewhere, go to the park, um, little things like that. Um, writing a journal is so powerful when you feel overwhelmed that writing these emotions down just helps you have a clearer mind or just doodling um, little tips like this. I mean, um, I know I like just going for a walk with a friend and that I always feel like I haven't got time, I haven't got time, I'm too busy. But when I do take the time 
I, and actually do something for myself, I find actually I've never regretted it. So little things like that, take time, take a step back and say, what can I do for like half an hour or so that can just help me relax a little bit and just stop being too overwhelmed. So there are some nice little, there's lots of healthcare strategies, but some of them are, may, may help along the way. Amazing, thank you, Sophie. Brilliant, yeah. Yeah, I love those. I think, yeah, just to highlight, it's so important to take care of ourselves, you know. And I think there was, the, um, at the beginning of the pandemic, there was this huge drive, especially on social media, to be productive, you know, don't waste this time that we yeah. have, this toxic productivity culture that was being pushed on us, where people were baking like 400 loaves of bread a week and learning a new language and learning the guitar, you know, it was, I thought it was, you know, it, it was quite, um, yeah, I think it was quite a lot of pressure on a lot of people. And again, that's such a dismissive approach to what people might actually be going through. Um, so yeah, I love those strategies, Sophie. Thanks for sharing them. And I think my tip would be being kind to yourself and being compassionate. You know, self-compassion is is really key. So like you were saying, Haley, with the um, ECFs, you know, if you need to apply for one, please apply for one. If you need to get support, please get support. You know, these are all free services for you as students. Um, you're paying for them in your fees, so access them while you're there. You know, you, you haven't been able to have the university experience you wanted and you envisioned for yourself over the last year and a half. And hopefully it will we'll get there come September, October of the next academic year. But definitely pull on the resources, contact your tutors if you need, connect with friends and be kind to yourself. You know, a lot of us, I think, live in our own heads, beating ourselves up 24 seven. And that's not constructive, that's not helpful, that's not healthy. So really finding ways to, um, I suppose, manage that. And like Sophie suggested, you know, connecting with nature, connecting with a friend, grounding yourself, increasing your self-awareness with some journaling. Yeah, I think that, that would be really useful. Yeah, thank you, Cheryl. I think it's really interesting what you were saying about, um, I've just lost a point in my head. <laughs> um, so there were so many tips there, I was just trying to process it all um about like that's it the students paying for mm. part of your fees so all these services you've got well-being service you've got you've got student finance as well access and bursaries um you've got ASTAC chaplaincy and I think a lot of students think of it as like a add-on rather than something that's part of your you know yeah. student experience so you know if you absolutely take the make the most of it as you can you know like you said at the beginning WhatsApp is a really good way to sort of get started with those having a conversation, speaking to a counsellor and all of that stuff as well. So I think that is, that's the first step. Um, I, but I think my tip would be try and do, rather do as much as possible, but look for opportunities to try and sort of do things that you enjoy because there's lots of advice out there saying like journaling and stuff like meditation stuff. Like it's good for a lot of people. Also, it doesn't work for a lot of people as well. Like someone like me, I'm very like impatient, always want to move. So meditation isn't the one for me, but going for a run, for example, and getting the energy out, like probably has the same effects after feeling a bit more relieved, a bit less tense, a bit less stressed. And it's just trying to figure out what you like rather than forcing yourself to like something because it's good for your well-being. Like forcing yourself to go out to socialise isn't going to be good if, you know, that's not what you want to do. Um, but yeah, so we've come to the end now. So I want to say thank you, Michelle and Sophie, for... Um, joining us today for some really good discussions. Thank um, you. Just to remind yeah, everyone, yes. UPS UK um, is running this week, so there's a couple of activities going on. If you go on upsu.net forward slash what's on, you can see everything there. Um, tomorrow we've got um, ASDAC doing some organisation training um, and how to manage your timetable, you know, if you're a bit overwhelmed or tend to procrastinate. Um, and we've also got yoga going on as well. And at the end of the week, we've got a quiz going on on our Instagram so just to summarize everything that we've talked about this week and everything that's been going on um but yeah thank you very much Michelle and Sophie for joining in um, thank you for having us Hayley thank, thank you. you enjoy the rest of the evening and take care everyone take care bye bye, -bye. bye.